when I came into trading, I thought I was going to have a Lamborghini and all the kicks <laughs> and gadgets like in the first week. And, um, you know, when you first start trading, you actually do have a degree of beginner's luck. And so did you go the options way because the initial margin is smaller and that gets no, you access? Or? I actually went the options way because that's what I was introduced by the individual that was doing the binary option. So right. I didn't even really know anything else. I went to school and I started finance. So I was familiar with like the financial sure. markets, but not the like interest intricacies of actually like what goes into it. So that was the first thing that I got introduced into. But the thing I don't like about binary, binary options is like you have an expiry time. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but you open, uh, I guess, a contract or position and you can do like a one minute, a five minute, like different time frames. And if that position is uh, underneath or above the entry point, then you win the position. Let's just say I'm going to go for like a put option. Mm. If it is uh, above that, when the expiry time actually happens, then I'll win the position. But what I learned when I was putting more time into trading that you actually need time and then you have like fluctuations and you have order block, all these other things that go into it. So I'm like, I'm kind of actually gambling and I'm not really looking more so into price action. So I then found out about industry trading and like Forex a little more when I was in that niche. And I never really wanted to get in Forex. So I just hopped right in, in, into the Dow, which yep. like a lot of people would say that's kind of crazy because they believe that you should go with like, you know, uh, like currency pairs like JP or UJ or like Audi or something a little slower than make your way up to like gold and indices. But I just wanted to get straight into like, you know, I said, if I can invest my learning into something that I'm going to like kind of go into, I might as well just jump right into it and like learn from that position. So, And you've stuck with that one. Instrument. Yeah, I, I actually been trading US 30 since the beginning and I just started to cheat on US 30 a little bit and start trading NASDAQ because I feel like the <laughs> price action is just a little bit cleaner. So now I, I trade NAS and US 30. But yeah, I, I definitely would say um, US 30 is my baby for sure. What do you find is good about that to trade? Um, I like the volatility aspect because for my... So trading is something that's really intimate and personal because a lot of people have like different strategies and different mindsets and all these different things that they say are going to make you profitable or going to make you have this type of hit rate and all that type of stuff. But it's really not that. Trading is a very psychological game and you have to do what works for you. So for myself, I'm not the type of individual that would really like get into swing trading unless I find like a great position and I have uh, fundamentals behind it and great technicals and I'm just going to hold a position. I would rather take my risk and know if I'm right or wrong within the next hour or two. So you get that with the with trading indices because you have so much bullish or bearish momentum that comes into the market, especially when you understand like certain times to trade. Like if you're trading within session, you can actually like make a good bit of money in a short period of time and then go back to doing whatever you want to do. So I didn't really want to get into currency pairs and kind of be dragged out. You know, I wanted to just have more decision making process more than like the whole dragged out all day type of product. That's not me. You know, that's not for my personality type. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the way the underlying trades in the in the real world as well, isn't it? There's, yeah. there's a certain order flow that you've got no idea about in the forex market. It's a little bit more obvious to try and to try and follow and track in the in the um, stocks and indices world, isn't it? Yeah, so, definitely. So, what would a typical day look like for you? Are you are you hands on trading all day type of guy? Or not? I got no. the, I got the feeling for a minute ago you're going because I've got other things to do with my time. So it's like the evolution of, 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 of my journey. So um, I have a lot, to, uh, a lot to be grateful for. And I'm, I'm so grateful that, you know, God has put certain people in my life because I met my friend Daniel and he actually like really refined my trading because I was the individual that was like scalping, scalping, scalping. And I was like waiting for the bell. Like that's what I used to do. Just wait for it, which is like 2.30 our time. Only works. Yeah, like 2.30 our time. I'm like, all right, here we go. You know what I mean? It was like more so like gambling. And then like started to get like integrated with people that have different processes. So, and I realized like it's more so finding a good position of finding an order block and taking your position for that day, win or lose, and then coming back the next day and putting yourself into a system. So now, and before what I used to do is just like make sure I stayed up really late and try to be on like New York time. I'll go sleep like three, four o'clock. Can't to, afford to miss that one time. Because I had to stay up to make myself tired because if I would have woke up at like nine o'clock, I'm just going to be looking at the charts like from nine all the way to 2.30. So I would make myself stay up so late so I'll be waking up like 1.30. And, how, and, how, and on that basis, how would you resist trading in the London session or the European session? Well, now I actually do take positions okay. in London session, but only after like 12, 12.30 when volume comes in, which like right before New York session. But um, before I was just waiting to the bell and that was, it wasn't, you know, I was, I was trading live accounts, like smaller accounts and flipping those type of accounts, but it wasn't the sustainability. So I said, you know what? I got to put myself into a routine. My wife is out here. She goes to work. She wakes up every day. So I said, I'm going to start doing the same thing. So now my days look like I get up. Um, I like to read. 
So I would read my book, I would do my meditations, I would, you know, do some grounding, then I'd go to the gym, you know, I'd catch myself, and then I would just kind of like start peeping at the markets. But even when I'm in the gym, I'm just trying to like integrate myself and be in touch with the markets. Because even if I'm not trading, I'm still on trading view, kind of like looking at the charts and just getting a sense of like where price action is. One thing that I find found that actually helped me a lot more was looking at trading view and not looking at my broker. I don't know why that is for me, but when I actually look like at my broker and I see the price, it just gives a different feel. Like there's red and- You could, and, you could be going- Yeah, yeah it gives yeah. me a little like anxiety just slightly, but when I look at TradingView, being that I can't, I only trade off of my broker, I don't trade off at TradingView. So when I only look at TradingView and you I know-, know It's got it, to be considered before you do. Yeah, it's like I have to do more so of like analysis and like actually understand what I'm looking at before I hop into a position. So I'll be on TradingView now and I wouldn't open up my broker until I'm actually gonna take a position. And I find that's very like helpful for me. And then when I actually wanna like actively take a position, I'll go to my computer. Cause I don't, I take positions off of my phone sometimes because it's like more savvy, yeah. but I'm only at my computer, my two monitors, I'm having full insights. I wanna see like back tests. I wanna see everything that's going on because you only have one shot. I mean, you can over trade, but you only have like one shot to make an accurate decision to have like long term consistent consistency. So after I trade, um, usually I'll be done like around three o'clock our time, three thirty, and then my wife usually gets home at five o'clock, and then I, I do the marriage thing. You know, she comes home. How was your day? You know, we you got your penny on. Yeah, <laughs> and every day I'm like, being that I'm, I'm a trader, like I'm, I'm home a lot. So you would find me like if you had a camera in my house, I'm the one vacuuming. I'm oh, the one. Because there'll be a list that you've got to go yeah, through. Yeah, you know. So like, I'm washing the dishes, <laughs> I'm making up the bed, I'm doing all those things, and it's cool, you know, to like because like that whole gender role thing is like BS. You know what I mean?